welcome class to this um, section and this part of the course I'm going to talk about inferential statistics now in inferential statistics we are able to take um, samples and then based on some um, um, computations from this sample we are able to infer or generalize whatever we got from the sample as what is happening in the population. In other words, we are able to make conclusions concerning the population. Okay, so we're going to deal with several of these and we're going to talk about test of hypothesis. We'll talk about test of hypothesis for means, for proportions, for correlation, for um, um, one sample, means concerning one sample, it can be proportion concerning one sample or two or more samples. So we are going to deal with this. In, in, in this part of the course okay now so I'm going to give a brief discussion on test of hypothesis of course if you take any basic statistics book you see um, you will see test of hypothesis in it and you've done some of these things in your 223 class okay and and um, those are the masters in your undergraduate courses as well um, so um, in test of hypothesis, usually you need a null hypothesis. What is a null hypothesis? It's a status school, right? Okay, so it's each note is or the assumption we wish to test. Okay, so for example, I'll, I'll give an example very soon. The alternative hypothesis, which is usually we represent but as H1, is what? The conclusion we do not accept or we do accept um, whenever we reject the um the h naught or the null hypothesis okay now so these are you know complement of each other h naught and h1 so you cannot com um, um, conduct a test and then you say you do not reject h naught nor do you um, um fail to reject it so one of those two must happen okay now so the example over here is that you have they say the average blood protein in a healthy adult is 7.25 grams per deciliter with a standard deviation sigma is equal to 0.03. Now assume that the blood protein follows a normal distribution and then you take some sample of runs on a patient and you got this. So the question is based on this information, can you conclude that the, the patient is healthy or not? So such an a situation we can answer such a question using what hypothesis testing okay yeah also hypothesis testing can be um, explained using for example the um, court system so remember that in our jurisdiction and many other jurisdiction an accused person is assumed to be innocent right before the court of law so for example if you um, see somebody stealing anything, you know, the person is still a suspect until, let's say, you report the case, the police will do investigations, and then they, they build the docket, send the person to court, you know, present that evidence before the court. The accused is also entitled to um, a representation, a legal representation. They will argue it out at the end of the day, the, the judge will now, you know, based on the evidence that is provided and the counter argument, now decide whether the person is guilty or not. So in this case, you, your your H not is that the accused is innocent, and H one is what well, the accused is guilty or the accused is not innocent. Okay, then the evidence you provide is what is going to be used to judge. So in this case, the, your evidence can be said to be the test statistics. So that is used to test against an established law, right? And that law, we can say that is, for, for example, your critical um, value, okay? So that's what you are going to use to, uh, to make your decision as to whether the person is guilty or different. So when we come back to this question, is the person guilty? Uh, sorry, is the person healthy? Uh, is the person healthy? Then you can go through some, you know, um, um, basic things to in order to what to 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 answer this question. So usually we say 
each note will in this case will be that the patient is healthy is that your the average um the average blood protein is what 725 grams per deciliter if it is not less than that if it is less than or greater than that then it means you are unhealthy that is not equal to 50 um 7.25 and if you know we can assume that is normally distributed find the test statistics for it or a confidence interval and then we'll be able to use this in interval to be able to make our decision okay so i'm just going to go through the steps that we'll use in 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 testing our hypothesis and this will be used each and every time that we want to use so this is the general outline for a test and this is for large sample test for me right okay so my no hypothesis remember the example we talked about mu was equal to 7.25 so our mu naught is a 7.25 right then the alternative hypothesis it can be two till which is what we considered or it can be one till so for example if let's say um i work in let's say coca-cola and um our bottle is filled to 250 ml and let's say i am the product prod, uh, production manager and i suspect that my con, um, my operators are overfilling the bottles in other words maybe we we have thousand liters of pork um, um to dispense and into bottles and we end up getting less bottles than we are supposed to get then i will be interested in checking whether the alternative is that the mean is greater than the 250 right okay now if on the other hand i am from let's say a consumer protection agency i am interested in checking whether coca-cola is actually shortchanging its customers so in that case i'm going to test the hypothesis what meal not is less than meal uh, meal is less than meal not in other words are they under failing and so forth so depending on your interest your alternative hypothesis may be a two um once we are able to get our um alternative hypothesis the next thing is our test statistics what is the test statistic it is in if you remember the the court example i cited this is what our evidence okay against the accused okay let's say the prosecution so here what we are going to do is that because we are testing hypothesis concerning the mean the sample the, the 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 statistic that is close to our 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 population mean or at the estimate the estimator of our population mean will obviously be what our sample mean but we cannot just use our sample mean just like that why is it so because if we do so you see we we in, in, in statistics you cannot just compute a mean and then you say okay so we computed the mean for the the sugar level of the um the patient and it is 10 so you say the the person is not healthy no the computation of the mean is part of the discrete statistics as we have seen so in the hypothesis testing you standardize or you 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 find what we call a pivot okay so a pivot you will do this in in um um we usually do this at level 300 or in any statistical methods class where you a pivot is a function on the parameter of interest but however its distribution is completely known okay so our pivot in this case is z right which is a function of the mean the population mean however its distribution is completely known so for example here we know that z is what normally distributed and it is a standard normal distribution so we should be able to find um, um the quantile values and then we'll be able to decide whether our hypothesis should be accepted or not so one other thing is all rejection region right the rejection region also depends on the tail of the distribution so if it is two tail then you are going to get two tails so you, when you draw your normal probability plot you know you have the larger values you reject and for smaller values you also reject and that's why two tail um, um test for the one tail test you are interested in just one so if you are testing for um whether the cook 
it's over the, you are your people are over failing then you are going to um 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 take this if it is the other one you take the um for um less than and so forth so where you reject if if it's here then it's over failing so you reject the no hypothesis if it is under failing you are going to do what less than and so forth okay now let me say that um this test we can revert back and know this is called a large sample test where n is greater than 30. what occurs when n is less than 30. when n is less than 30 our test statistics here we say it is what a t distribution right so the same thing but it is t distribution okay and it has degrees of freedom n minus one okay so that's that's basically what we mean by this now remember that we can also do this in a two sample test right so i'm going to do a one sample test and then when i finish we can now go to a two sample test okay all right so that's for um we i'm going to talk about the first example where we were interested in what checking whether a person is healthy or not so we have a sample of measurements right eight and as i said because this is a small sample this distribution is going to be a t right okay so i'll just i come to r and then i say um b protein b dot protein so this is my data on b protein right and i do it like this and there it is now so this is the data and i run it okay so if i want to display it i have the data on what the protein now the question is how do i do this test and what is my test i want to test whether the average blood protein is equal to 7.25 or not okay now to do such a hypothesis in now we use what we call t dot test the function t dot test T dot test okay now this t test needs x needs x okay now y is optional and you see the t test can be one sample or it can be two sample so when it is two sample then you need its counterpart y so i'm using this to talk about the so we have argument x and i've explained x is the first data if we happen to have a second sample or a, a second population where we took a sample from then we are going to get y as well we have to input in y okay. then the alternative is the alternative hypothesis so for example if you are doing a two tail test then it means your alternative is two-sided if you are doing a one tail test and it is left then it is less and if you are doing a one tail test and you are doing the greater than like for example the the um coca-cola example where the production manager wants to check whether there is overfilling then you are going to do greater than okay so at any point in time you can only test one of these alternative hypotheses okay then there is mu mu is the null hypothesis so by default it is zero but remember that in this example that we are doing the the null hypothesis is that mu is equal to 7.25 so if we are using this we are going to change mu to 7.5 okay then spread bad or equal and then mm -hmm. come level i will i will explain this briefly and then when we come back to the two tilters i will talk about it 
Yeah. So paired is when you have two populations and the populations are paired. So for example, look at the anorexia data we've been dealing with. You see the same person, you are taking sample before you join the program and after you join the program. So each, each, each observation you take two, I mean, each person you take two observations from. That's what I mean, right? That's what we mean by paired. Okay. Now, this is different from the case where you have what? You have two populations. So, for example, we have the population of Ghana and Nigeria. And then I want to, for example, check whether the average salary of a government employee is, let's say, um, in, in Nigeria is higher than that of Ghana. Then you mean I will take sample from Nigeria and I will take sample from Ghana. They don't depend on each other. They are independent. So in that case, you will say paired is equal to false. Then var dot equal is that if I that is also uh, that also applies to two populations, right? So if I'm going to check population of Ghana and population of um, Nigeria, then I'm interested in checking whether the variation between their salaries are equal or not. If they are not equal, I'll put false. If they are um, equal, I'll put true. Okay. Then the confidence level is when, what is the level or your significance level? If your significance level is 0 0.05 or 5%, then it means your confidence level is what? 0.95, right? And also, if it is 10%, it means your confidence level will be 90%. So that, um, what we mean by a t-test in this in this. So I'm going to use it um, for this. So I'll copy and paste it here, right? And then I'll take off those that I don't need. Okay. So this one, we because we are interested in what two tail tests. Remember that the um, the hypothesis was what um, it is not equal to what um, seven point two five. So here. Mu, as I said, is 7.25, right? Paired, we don't need any of this. It's not even applicable because this is one sample. Then confidence level, let's leave it at 95%. Okay, But it could be 90 or anything, right? Okay. Now, so this is our test, okay, concerning this. And then we do, we, we do this, okay? Um, sorry, I have to put x is equal to b dot protein. Okay. So x is our data and it is equal to what? b dot protein. So this is the result of our test and I'm going to explain it and it will be similar for the rest we will be do dealing with. So it tells you that this is what? One sample t test, right? The data is B dot protein. T, this is a T you compute for, which is X bar minus the, the mean. The mean for this is what, 7.25, which is the actual um, population mean or the parameter. And then we will divide by what? The, the, the um, standard error of the mean. Okay. So that T is 1.67. The degrees of freedom is 7. P-value is this. Okay. Now, there are several ways in which you can conclude this test. Okay. We, we can use a T. If we use a T, then it means I must also read the value of T from tables. Remember, in your exam, usually we'll give you a statistical, statistical tables. And for statistical tables, you will get P distribution from it. See, the degrees of freedom is 7. So I can read this T even from R. If I want to read it from R, it is the quanta of the T distribution, which is QT, my P, right? P is your um, confidence level, right? So P is equal to what? 0 0.95. Then remember, you have what? Degrees of freedom, DF, is equal to 7, right? Okay. And then lower dot tail is true. But, um, yeah, lower dot tail is true. 
we can leave it like that and then we get it so the t value is what 1.89 and this is symmetric so the other side will be on negative 1.89 so you see the rejection region is if the value is greater than 1.89 or if it is less than what negative 1.89 so if we are using this t then we know that our value t the, that we computed from our sample falls in between what negative 1.89 and 1.89 so what do we do we will fail to reject this on our hypothesis in other ways, the person is healthy. Okay. So that's the first one, which is using the T. The second is the p-value, right? Right Now, the p-value, um, so p-value is the, the rule we use in using the p-value is simple. Um, we, we, we say that if the p-value if the p value is less than your alpha, you know, reject the null hypothesis. Reject H naught. Let me say H naught. Okay. So, you know, is the weight of evidence against your null hypothesis? So, if it is less than your alpha, you reject it, right? Okay. So, um, Look at the p-value. Our alpha in this case is what? It's 0 0.05 because we chose confidence level as what? 1 minus alpha, which is 0 0.95, right? So if you look at this p-value, it is greater than what? 0 0.05. So what do we do? We will fail to reject H naught. What does that mean? It means what? The adult is healthy. So whichever way you, whichever way you, you use to interpret your results you should get the same thing okay so our alternative hypothesis has been stated true is not equal to that then the last one is for the 95 percent confidence interval for this is this 7.243 7.29 we can also use that to also conclude our test now what do you, what is the criteria for this you see if my interval encloses my population parameter, then it means the 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 I cannot reject the null hypothesis, right? But if my my statistic falls beyond the confidence interval, then I can say that what I will reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, if you look at it, this interval encloses my population parameter. So what do I do? I will fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay. So that's that's how you you um, um, interpret this test, and then you know. So you reject the null hypothesis. You fail. Sorry, you fail to reject your null hypothesis. And what is the meaning of that? If you don't reject your null hypothesis, it means the average the average um, uh, blood protein for the adult that you sample from is not significantly different from seven point two five. And 7.25 is when the patient is so healthy. So we can declare that this patient is healthy. So in a nutshell, that's how you conduct a T-test. And this is what? A one-sample T-test. Okay. That is how you conclude your test.